is when you're talking to the, to the principalities and reminding the powers and telling them who you are and what's going to happen. That's when you get an attitude. We have access to God with boldness and confidence. We can go boldly to the throne of God. We can go confidently to him. But what does the devil do? He keeps bringing up your past. He keeps bringing up your failures. He keeps bringing up your shortcomings. I'm not going to God on the basis of my righteousness. Not my righteousness. I'm going on the basis of his righteousness and who he is. Welcome to Flat Out Elected. My name is Rand Campbell. And today we are going to talk about the single most important truth you could ever know in this life. You see, knowing all of these truths about the deceptions being carried out in this world that have been carried out for generations upon generations are, 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 are good truths to know. It's, it's good to come to these truths. But the ultimate most important single most amazing truth that you will ever come to is Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about salvation. One of my subscribers asked in the comment section of a recent video if I would talk about salvation. Now there are other videos on this channel that do exactly that, but you know what? Any time is a great time to talk about the Lord and, and salvation and what he accomplished on that cross. So for me, this is a beautiful opportunity to talk about the Lord and to explain salvation to those that may not understand what it is and maybe even give those that have an understanding a greater understanding in that they would become closer to God and more at one with God as Jesus Christ was. So this is Webster's Dictionary's definition of salvation. So it's interesting. The first definition is preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. The second definition, deliverance from sin and its consequences, believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. So let's get into this. Let's talk about what salvation is and why it is the single most important truth and the single most important gift known to humanity. Salvation, my favorite truth of all truths. To me, salvation is why all of the other deceptions exist. If you look at all of the, the, the deceptions that are being exposed in this world today, they are all by design meant to keep you from knowing God, knowing Jesus Christ, and ultimately having faith in Jesus Christ that you would have salvation. So the ultimate truth is Jesus Christ, and I'm going to explain that in this video. So. The wages of sin are death, that your spirit would not be given life, that your spirit would be dead. And because of this, a dead spirit is automatically separated from God. God is spirit. In John 4, it says that we are made in the image of God and God is a spirit. So if your spirit is dead, because of the, the wages of sin, if the results of sin are that you would have a dead spirit, then that would be the ultimate separation here in this world from God. So you are separated from God. You cannot be at one with God as Jesus Christ was. The wages of sin are death. Now, you're still on this side of Revelation. You're still here in this world, as deceived as it is, God is still accessible here in this world. How, how is he accessible? He's accessible only through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that he is the truth, he is the life, and nobody gets to the Father but through him. That isn't only true in 
the afterlife in your eternal existence. It's true here in this life. You cannot access God but through Jesus Christ. And your spirit being dead to sin because the wages of sin are death, your spirit cannot be given life but through Jesus Christ. That's why he says he is the truth and the life. You see, when Adam and Eve turned on God, when they went against God in the garden, they received the wages of sin, spiritual death. And as a result, Satan, the serpent, received dominion over the world. And because of that, we inherited dead spirits, the wages of sin, when we come to this world. That's why Jesus said, you can't be born again of the flesh. You can only be born again of the spirit of water. It is a spiritual birth, not a physical birth. And so what is salvation? Well, salvation is an absolute 100% beautiful gift from God. Because he knows that we cannot give our own spirits life. Our spirits are dead to sin. You cannot breathe life into your own spirit. You have a soul that operates in this world, but it does not operate with a spirit given life until you receive Jesus. Now, how do we know that's true? Well, we know that's true in the beginning through faith, and then through faith and through understanding the word of God, and through worshiping God, and through aligning our souls with a spirit-given life through Christ, we begin to take faith to its next level, and it becomes knowing. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am at one with the Father. He was at one with the Father because he was 100% aligned to his spirit, and our spirits are in the image of God. So we come here to this world with a dead spirit because the wages of sin are death. The death of the spirit separates us from God. You are, are separated from God. That's why when Jesus Christ was on that cross and he screams out, Father, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Where are you? That was the moment he received our sins. That was the very first time in Jesus Christ's time here on earth where he was separated from the Father because the wages of sin are death. His spirit died and he was no longer at one of the, with the Father. He was no longer alive in spirit. Those are the wages of sin. He received the wages of sin when he took on the sins of the world. Now how do we know that because of Jesus Christ's accomplished purpose on that cross, that we, through him, can receive life in the spirit, that we would be born again, and that we would be able to receive salvation and forgiveness for our sins. How, how do we know that's true? Well, again, it begins with faith, and faith comes from hearing the word of God. Now, I know many Christians, myself included, that had heard the word of God long before we actually received the Word of God spiritually. You see, understanding the Word of God with physical ears is much different than receiving the Word of God in the spiritual aspect of who it is that we are. That's why it says those with ears to hear and eyes to see. You see, in order to receive the true Word of God, the resonating Word of God, the spiritual Word of God, you have to have ears to hear. And that's why I believe the gospel is anointed beyond our understanding. And that's why Jesus said, you know, preach the gospel to all nations and to all creation. Because I believe that, that the gospel has a miracle anointing on it, that when you hear the gospel in that moment, when God opens your ears that you hear the word of God, you begin to have this faith in Jesus Christ. And like John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
is not just about believing that Jesus Christ existed. It's about believing in him. It's about trusting in him. That you would believe that he died for your sins. That you would believe everything Jesus Christ said. That you would believe that when Jesus Christ said, he is the truth and he is the life, and that nobody gets to the Father but through him. That you wouldn't just believe that he existed but that you would believe through faith that he told the truth and that what he accomplished on that cross is real. He died for your sins. You see, when you're separated from God here in this world, you still have an opportunity to accept this gift of grace and mercy. Now, where does grace and mercy reside? Well, it resides in Jesus Christ. But where did God put that grace and mercy? If we're separated from God, where did he put this grace and this mercy? Well, he put it right there in that separation. He put it between him and us. Jesus Christ is between us and God. That's why you have to go through Christ to get to God, to get to the Father. He put it right there for you to reach out and receive. That's the beautiful thing about grace and mercy, salvation, forgiveness. It's a gift. And he put it between us and him that you would receive it and desire a closeness, a relationship with God. You see, when you pass out of this life and you go into the eternal life, the separation between you and God exists. Here you have an opportunity to repair that through Jesus Christ. And if you accept Jesus Christ, you can be at one with the Father. You can you can be at one with this wonderful, amazing, beautiful creator. But if you die never making that connection, never receiving Jesus Christ, never reaching out to that grace and mercy that resides in the separation between us and God, then when you get to the other side, you will spend eternity separated from God. An eternal separation from God, there's no love, there's no peace, there's no joy, there's no kindness, there's no beauty. You, you, you won't enjoy a breeze coming off the ocean. You won't enjoy the love that you, that you enjoy here. You won't enjoy the pleasures of sin. Sin will still exist. You'll take your sins with you. But there'll be no pleasure that comes with them. You see, separation from God is the most horrific thing you could experience. Here, you can, you can have temporal satisfaction. You can fill the void between you and God. You can fill that hole in your life with temporal satisfactions with the things of this world. But you will never understand peace and joy and the love of the Father until you accept Jesus Christ and begin the process of filling that void in your life with Jesus Christ. It, it's, it's that simple. It is an amazing gift, a wonderful gift. It is a merciful gift. We don't deserve it. We absolutely don't deserve this gift, but yet there he is in all his love and his mercy and his grace. He gives us this gift of salvation. He gives us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ would suffer his way to that cross. But he was still at one with the Father throughout all that suffering. It wasn't until he received our sins and yells out on that cross, Father, where are you? That he was separated from the Father for the very first time because he received our sins. And we have never known oneness with the Father without Jesus Christ. We have always had that, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? We have always had that without Christ. Because the wages of sin are death. And, 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 and the death is the death of the Spirit. In that you would be separated from the Creator of which whom is Spirit, according to John 4. So salvation is... A gift. There's nothing you can do to receive it. 
Jesus Christ already accomplished it on the cross. There's nothing you can do. There is no deed. There is no kind act. There are no words you can speak. There is nothing you cannot justify your sin before the Father. There's nothing you can do to receive salvation but through Jesus Christ. He accomplished that on the cross. He took on our sins that we would be able to have life in the spirit and be at one with the Father as he was before he received our sins. And then Jesus died, and this is beautiful because when he died, he was buried for three days. And on the third day, he was resurrected. And that resurrection is the spirit being given life. And that's what happens to us. You see, we have a dead spirit. It's buried until we accept Christ. And when we accept Christ, our spirit is given life. And that's salvation. Now, if you think about salvation, you know, when you go to the garbage dump and you're dumping off garbage, you might see something that you think is still salvageable. You still see beauty in it. You still see purpose in it. And that's what God sees. He sees purpose. He sees beauty in us, even as filthy rags as we are, even as rotten to the core as we are. The disciples asked Jesus Christ, who amongst us is good? And Jesus said, not one of you. No one is good. Because before God, we're not good. Now you might think that you're good and you might say, oh, well, I'm a pretty good person. I did well in school. I was a good child. I didn't give my parents trouble. I went to college. I got all these degrees. I met a man. We got married. I'm raising a family. I've never been to jail. I've never really committed any crimes. Why would God want me to go to hell? And the answer is he doesn't. He doesn't want you to go to hell. Why would he sacrifice his only begotten son to give you salvation through grace and mercy if he wanted you to go to hell? He doesn't want you to, but he wants you to make the choice. You see, salvation is a choice. You have to choose Christ. You have to choose that your spirit is no longer dead as the wages of sin and given life that you could be at one with the Father. God doesn't want anybody to not be saved. He wants everybody saved. Of course he does, but we have free will. And it's going to end up being your choice that you die outside of this world in the flesh and remain dead in the spirit on the other side of revelation. That's why Jesus said you can't be born again in the flesh. You can only be born again in the spirit. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth and the life, the life of the spirit. And nobody gets to the father with a dead spirit. Nobody gets to the father, but through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ resides between us and him. He is the grace and mercy that fills the void in the separation of us and God. Receiving Jesus Christ is the ultimate truth. He is the greatest truth this world has ever known. We live in a very, very deceived world. And the more you realize the deceptions of this world, and the more you pick up your scriptures, the more you start to, to talk to Christians that truly have a relationship with Christ. The more your heart opens up and the more you understand and, and the more you hear the word of God. And if you're hearing the word of God with ears to hear, you're going to begin to have faith in Jesus Christ and everything he said and everything he did. Jesus Christ never lied. He truly is the truth and the life and nobody gets to the Father but through him. He truly did die in that cross and receive our sins. And for the receiving of our sins, he was separated from the Father for that moment when he yelled out, Father, where are you? And then he was resurrected. His spirit was resurrected. And, 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 and that is the most beautiful truth you're ever going to know. Because he was resurrected after receiving our sin, we, through him, can have our spirits given life and be forgiven and receive salvation because God finds beauty in you. God loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to, to renew you. He wants your spirit to be given life through Jesus Christ so that you 
could be saved. I know this is true because I experienced it. I know this is true because God revealed to me that the spirit is dead as the wages of sin and only through Jesus Christ can the spirit be given life and only a spirit given life can escort a soul lost to this world back to the Father. You see, your soul is in this world with free will and it is choosing the ways of the world. Your soul is operating in the ways of this world. And the God of this world is Satan. And that's what Jesus is pulling you out of. He's pulling you out of the ways of this world. He's pulling you out of sin. He's pulling you out of the wages of sin. He doesn't want you separated from the Father. He knows what it's like to be at one with the Father. He knows it better than any of us. And he wants us to have that. He wants us to experience being at one with the Father. But you can't be at one with the Father if you have a dead spirit. Your soul is operating in a world greatly deceived. You're receiving temporal satisfaction and temporal joy and temporal peace in a world deceived. True peace, true, true, true joy, true peace, true joy can only come through Jesus Christ. People ask me all the time if I would pray for peace and joy in their life. And I said, you believe in Jesus Christ? And they go, no. I said, then I don't want to pray for you to have a fake, false, temporal peace and joy. I want to pray that you, you, you accept Christ, that you get to know Jesus Christ. Because only through him can you have true peace and true joy. You can't have peace and joy in this world. Absolutely not. I know because I've experienced it. I've tried to fill the void between me and God with the things of this world and it didn't work. And I know it's not working for a lot of people. I know a lot of people are gonna hear this video and it's gonna resonate with them. And they're gonna understand that until you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, there is absolutely no peace and no joy in this world. And it's gonna get worse. It's already getting worse. So accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believing in him, believing on Jesus Christ, through faith is your connection back to God. It's the, the breathing of life into the spirit which is dead to sin. If you're, if you're sick and tired of being separated from God, if you're sick and tired of trying to, to, to satisfy your, your being, to, to try to satisfy your life, with the things of this world, if you've come to that place where you realize the things of this world no longer satisfy you, and you know something is missing in your life, you know that there is an emptiness, you know that there is a hole that this world, the deceptions of this world just can't fill. I promise you what that is, is your relationship with God. What that is, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. There is no worldly thing, nothing in and of this world that can satisfy you and fulfill you like your relationship with God. You have to repent of your sins, repent of your unbelief and believe on Jesus Christ. Pray, ask God to reveal himself, pray, Ask God to give you the ears to hear and the eyes to see in these times of absolute deception. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you that you could receive salvation today. I promise you, it will be the greatest truth you will ever know. Knowing the truths of the deception of this world are great. It's good. It's good that you know that. But if they don't lead you to Jesus Christ, you have missed the greatest truth of all. And the greatest truth is that this world, Satan, in his dominion over this world and his indoctrinations, influence and conditioning, has been very clever, even in his way of turning people away from God, turning away from Christianity, turning away from Jesus Christ, and his way of being able to have that accomplished, has been very successful. Many people have been taken away from Christ as
Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your time is now. I know God is calling you to do that. Repent of your unbelief. Put your face to the floor. Ask for his forgiveness. Receive him as your Lord and Savior today. I ask that God blesses you guys. You guys take care of yourselves.